CIS Countdown is brought to you by Canada Safeway. Canada Safeway is a proud sponsor of the 2011 Vanier Cup, November 25th in Vancouver. Polishing this off here. This happens to be the Vanier Cup, and that's what CIS football is all about. I'm Jim Mullen, and I'm your host of the CIS program that will bring you football from the beginning of the season through to the end of the season. We know there's a CIS nation out there, and that's why we have CIS Countdown. And you're going to want to get to the highlights, and the man that's going to bring you the highlights is Mr. Andrew Wadden. And Andrew, when you take a look at CIS action last week, it was all about rivalries and all about some big upsets. Yeah, and one that uh, maybe kind of finished off, well, only a way I could in Canada. Yes, that's right, on one of those return punts. Uh, but first of all, let's start in the Canada West. Yes, that's right, Jim. We'll start in the Canada West where provincial bragging rights were on the line in the tune. Rams and Huskies lock horns at Griffith Stadium. As seen, of course, on Shaw. Dylan Hart starting his first CIS game in place of Mark Mueller, who's out indefinitely with a shoulder injury. But it's the defense that comes up big early for the Rams. Down 3-0, the visitors force a fumble down near Saskatchewan's own goal goal line. Adam Bates picks up the gift for an easy score and Regina's suddenly up 7-3. Jump to the second quarter and it's a 10-3 Rams and the Huskies finally cash in through the air. Pass floated up and it is complete to Janky up at the 30-35. Still on uh -oh. his feet down the sidelines. One man to beat. Puts uh -oh. inside. He could go all the way. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown Saskatchewan Huskies. The Saskatchewan D also making big plays. Luke Teal intercepts hard to stall yet another Rams drive. Regina really struggling without Mueller. A couple of possessions later, the Huskies take their first lead. Jelani Gilbert Norn and Dexter Jenke hook up on a shovel pass, and it sets up the next play. A fake to Jenke and a toss to Garrett Bolin, who gains 12 yards and leaps into the end zone, just gets in for a 17 10 advantage. Saskatchewan would add a field goal for a 10 point halftime lead. Third Q now, and Regina just can't get anything going. Hart tries the deep ball, but throws his third pick to Bryce McCall. That led to another field goal. It's 23-10 Saskatchewan. Still in the third, and things go from bad to worse for the Rams. Already without Mueller, Dylan Hart injures his back on this hook slide, taking a late hit. He would not return. This left Frankie Gar Gray, Regina's third string QB, at the helm, and the young kid did some good things. He hits Connor Haas over the middle for 18 yards, then puts the ball into Adrian Charles' hands. Charles breaks through at the line for a big gain, down to the three. Regina with a chance to pull within six, but Gray's inexperience catches up with him. Two plays later, he loses the handle and fumbles away the Rams' last hope on a frustrating night for the visitors. Powers recovers and Saskatchewan marches on to a 33-10 victory over their provincial rivals. Jelani Gilbert Norrin finishes with 358 yards passing, 40 on the ground on the opening of the Huskies' 100th season of athletics. Saskatchewan hosts Manitoba on Saturday, trying to go a perfect 3-0. Regina falls to 0-2, doesn't get any easier with a trip to Calgary on Friday night. Both games can be seen on Shaw. Another Friday night game in the CW. Number four, Calgary hosting the 10th ranked UBC Thunderbirds. It's 10-10 in the third when Eric Dulesky connects with Jake Hardy, but T-Birds QB Billy Green was slinging it too. Green finds Ryan Cooper to pull UBC within six. It's 24-18 Dinos. He then hits Jordan Grieve for 53 yards to give UBC a 25-24 lead against the reigning Canada West champs. But Steven Lambala scores his second TD and the Dinos come back once again for a 30-25 win and improve to 2-0 on the season. Lambala with a huge game rushed for 202 yards to earn the Canada West Offensive Player of the Week. Green throws for 355 yards in the loss. UBC returns to the West Coast on Saturday for their home opener against Alberta. The one other score from the Canada West, Nick Boyd kicks the game winner with two minutes to go and Manitoba squeaks a 22-20 win over Alberta. The Bisons jump to 1-1 one one in the standings. Golden Bears are still in search of their first W. 
Head now to the queue, and it was another heated rivalry. This one shook down at Pep Stadium in Quebec City. It's a beautiful day for football in La Belle Province with Laval playing host to Montreal. Former Edmonton Eskimos head coach Danny Machocha making his debut at Peps, locking horns with Glenn Constantine and the reigning Vanier Cup champion, Rouge Or. Let's pick things up in the first queue. Laval up 3-0 when Freddy Pazuz comes in off the corner and hammers Alex nadeau Puiz, who's shaken up and forced to leave the game. Backup Yan Sear steps in, but things don't start well for the fifth year pivot. One minute into the first drive, Sear gets picked by, guess who? Freddie Pluis, number three in your program with the interception. He takes it to the house, a 57-yard return. Laval takes a 10-zip lead. Skip now to the second quarter. Nadu Pluis back in the game, and he connects with Felix Prevost over the middle and into the Laval territory. One play later, Michael Davidson takes a swing pass down to the 24. A Laval penalty brings the play to the nine. And after yet another Rouge Or penalty, Nadu Pluis punches it in with the QB sneak. Montreal cuts the lead to 10-7. Just over four minutes later, Montreal's defense gets the ball back and Nadu Puis works his magic, tossing a 29-yard bomb over two defenders into the arms of Felix Prevost, who taunts the Laval faithful. Montreal earns its first lead, but that wouldn't last long. Laval takes the ball into Montreal's area and Prudhomme hooks up with Christopher Lavaud with a 19-yard strike, but the clock it's ticking away. With the ball on Montreal's one and just five seconds left before the half, Sebastian Levesque scampers in for the six. Laval regains the lead up three at the half. Heading out to late in the third quarter, Prude home hits Guillaume Ryu on a slant for another Rouge Or touchdown. The defending champs take a 24-14 lead, and that's how it would end. Laval QB Bruno Prouon tosses 254 yards, connecting on 23 of 33 passes for one touchdown. The Rouge Or begin the season 2-0, while Montreal falls to 1-1. Other scores from around the queue, Sherbrooke remain unbeaten after topping McGill 39-13, while Concordia edged Bishops 25-18. Head now to the OUA, where we'll start with a wild one that ended up in an upset. Number eight ranked Laurier playing host to Windsor in the Hawks home opener. Pick things up in the second. Windsor down 18-0 when Austin Kennedy airs one out to Corey Fernandez who hauls it in. Lancers are on the board. It's 16-8. Jump now to the third and the Lancers keep it coming. Kennedy finds Jordan Brescratchen in the back of the end zone. Windsor's within four. And on the ensuing kickoff, Felix Odom gives Laurier some life, returning the ball 44 yards. That sets up this run from Anton Bennett who scores his second touchdown of the game. Laurier extends its lead to 11. But Kennedy continues his heroics, dodging two would-be tacklers to hit for scratching in the receiver's second major of the night. Windsor's back within four. However, Odom does it again, finding a hole, breaking down the sideline and beating Windsor's last line of defense. Odom goes 92 yards for the score. Hawks now with a 33-22 advantage. With just over a minute to go, Laurier up by seven when Kennedy connects with Fernandez once again for his second TD. Game is now locked at 40. Unreal comeback. This sets up an unbelievable finish. Windsor gets the ball back and they try to punt the ball through the end zone for the win. Yeah, but things don't go quite as planned. <laughs> What a finish. The Lancers eventually earned the Rouge to upset Laurier on the road. Windsor is now 2-0 incredibly. Kennedy with a big game throwing for 443 yards and five touchdowns. Laurier, meanwhile, drops their first of the season. Other scores include Toronto over York in a riveting 10-8 game to win the illustrious Argo Cup. Ottawa over Queens 19-6 and Guelph drops the hammer on Waterloo 65-13. That brings us now to the game of the week, and we'll stick in the OUA where it was number two Western versus number three McMaster. University Rush returns to the score for a tenth season, and we hope you are ready for what looks to be one of the best regular season matchups on the schedule. Might be a rule in Canadian football. Well, there's a cross about Matt Parasini. Wide open spaces inside the 20 and the second drive of the football game for McMaster. This is live bullets for them. Quinlan, plenty of time. Touchdown, McMaster. Matt Parasini with his first of the year. Donnie Marshall looking to respond after an impressive drive from Matt. Has plenty of time in the pocket. 
He'll try and get to the outside. Stops, goes back against the grain. Wide open Thibodeau. And he breaks the tackle. Gets the block. He's got big speed down the sidelines. And cut off at the 35-yard line as Mike Daly caught up to the Kitchener speedster. Riva again. Straight up the gut, bouncing off, tackles, touchdown, Western. And you wouldn't expect anything less for the defending Meats Cup champs to answer back right away. It's a great football game already. The deep back. Varga, and look out. Tyler Varga in MAC territory. Like the way the game was last year in the semifinals. And it's Varga untouched from a full house backfield that gives Western that lead. Tackle. Shovel pass, San Vito. And he takes it inside the five. Not the field goal, but the third down. Marshall, handoff. Varga over the top, touchdown, Western. A little Peyton-esque up over the top. The, the choice to go for it, for me, that's showing respect to Kyle Quinlan. Fourth straight incompletion movement from Western. Free play, perhaps, and they're going to try and go deep and complete. Bochasato taken down at the 16-yard line. Third and one. I think he is. Time winding down here in the first half, down 14. You gotta feel like this could be a huge turning point whichever way it goes. No question. When you talk about these teams playing for a maybe home field later in the year, it's even bigger. Quinlan in the shotgun. Pizzetta gets it, breaks one tackle, but doesn't get in. The Western Mustangs defense with three straight stops. Second and four to the flats. Parasini one hands it, reaches for the first down marker. Where will they spot it? They'll give it to him. Here in the third quarter. Mack trailing by 14. Quinlan looking deep for DeCroce. Touchdown, McMaster. 8.30 Eastern, live on the score. This is live on the score. Marshall to Marshall, and a big play for the Mustangs as Brian Marshall takes it to the 13-yard line. Varga the carry, bounces it to the outside, breaks one, breaks two, and finds the pylon. They'll mark him at the one-yard line. Varga the deep back. They give it to him. Touchdown number three and six on the season for the true freshman, Tyler Varga. The embarrassment of riches is the way you described it to start this game, Beach. Well, they set up the screen oh. and it's picked off. The big fella, Daryl Wad from Hamilton, has a touchdown in his first game in the CIS in his hometown. So the Western Mustangs kneel out the clock in what was an impressive victory here at McMaster and may put themselves into some conversation about being number one in the nation. Thanks to our friends at the score for the game of the week, we now head over to Jim Mullen. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew, and I did appreciate some of the French immersion on those highlights from the uh, Quebec League. When we return, we will take a look at a preview of the entire CIS campaign. I know we're two weeks into it, but there's still many weeks of football to look forward to. You are watching CIS Countdown. <laughs> 